We've reached the final out. Emmers went deep left field. This ball is gone. Way out of here by Sue. Hey, this kid's got great power. It's time to hear from the players and coaches. This is the BYU Baseball Post Game Show on the new skin, BYU Sports Network. Let's rejoin Brent Norton. Back here at uh, Larry Miller Field as the Cougars complete an 11-5 victory over the Niagara Purple Eagles here in a kind of a bonus game. They put this thing together just in the last uh, actually 24 hours as Niagara was into town playing UVU and University of Utah and had a game they were trying to pick up so it's worked out very well for both uh, teams and and um, uh, Cougars with another good effort. They've won six straight now. They are 12-3 and three on the year. Uh, Cougars 11 runs, 8 hits. Niagara 5 runs on 10 hits. Uh, Niagara committed three errors. Cougars uh, two errors in the ball game, and uh, so the Cougars with another victory, getting ready for that big weekend series with Gonzaga, which will be a big one here. Uh, two of the top teams in the conference going at it in uh, in Provo in a in a game that was normally scheduled for um, uh, Spokane, but uh, due to the amount of snow that they've got up there, they. Uh, moved it to Provo, and uh, so we'll be playing this weekend in Provo. BYU and Gonzaga. Gonzaga, the preseason pick to win the conference championship, so should be some good baseball and hopefully some good weather here in Provo to play uh, a little bit of baseball. We're still waiting for a player and Coach Littlewood to, to make their way up uh, to uh, talk about this game, so I think we'll take another break. Let's take a 60-second uh, break and be back with uh, a player and hopefully coach Littlewood right after this on your W.TV New Skin BYU Sports Network. This is BYU Baseball on the New Skin BYU Sports Network. All right, back here at uh, Larry Miller Field up in the press box. Uh, Cougars win this one by a score of 11 to 5 over Niagara with the win. Cougars improved to 12 and 3 on the year. Niagara 1 and 12. Cougars a big uh, fourth inning when they scored six runs. That was the difference maker in this ball game. They added uh, uh, two runs in the fifth, one in the sixth, and one in the eighth. And the Cougars hang on to win this one by a score of eleven to five. And uh, joined by Coach Mike Littlewood and Coach uh, again six straight, uh, ten out of eleven now for this team. And uh, and as you'd mentioned, great attitude on this team. And it just seems like again all facets were going pretty well for you today. Yeah, a little bit of a slow start. I think we were flat. It was kind of a weird, you know, there, there wasn't much prep time. We decided to play, and then 24 hours later, we're, we're on the field. So, you know, the scouting report was, wasn't was great, and it just it didn't have a great feel the first couple innings, and we were down two, and then you could feel it in the dugout. Something clicked a little bit. They decided they wanted to play, and, um, you know, we, we kind of rolled a little bit after that. Uh, Coach, you know, I, I, I love the – the kind of players you've got on this year's team with McIntyre, the ability to bring him into the mound, DH him. I know it's a big decision because he's such a dynamic defensive player yeah. in the outfield, but but uh, he's he's a fantastic weapon to have. He picked up the win today for you. He he really is. I mean, he might be our best left-handed pitcher, um, and so we need to find ways to use him. It's really tough to use him when he's playing left field, and so... You know, kind of what we've done is, um, unless it's an emergency, because you can bring him in from left field and then send him back, but then you you kind of lose your, your DH, and yeah. then you're in a nine-man lineup where the pitcher's got a hit. So that creates some problems. So it's easier when you when he's DHing because you can just have him go pitch and then come back and DH again. So we're trying to find a, a good spot for him. Usually, um, knock on wood, on Thursdays, uh, it's usually a day where we don't have to go too deep into the pen. Um, there's going to be times we will, but for the most part, we don't have to do that. We can use Ben Weiss if we need to as a left-hander back there. Um, and then maybe DH Mitch on Fridays. That's kind of what we're looking at uh, of day two of our series, where he can come out of the pen and we can use him that way. So just trying to figure some things out. Uh, but Deming's a dynamic two-way guy, freshman, who uh, put a couple good swings on there and was 90-92 off the mound. Yeah, so, I'll tell you, I was exciting. impressed with him. Yep. He was uh, – I love the way the way he looked at the plate, and then on on the mound, you can't argue with the, you know, uh, with how he looked. Uh, Nob Nyberg got in, had a good at bat, swung the bat yeah. very well too for you. Made a uh, Hobbs made a, a nice adjustment. Brian was a little bit tired, you know. He's he's got some medical things where he once he gets a little tired, and 
what's nice is Brian Sue is honest with me and he, he says hey I need somebody to hit for me I'm getting a little tired and I'm like okay I've done it enough times for a few years that I know that that's that's he's not just trying to get out of games uh he's hitting 400 so we like him in but uh, yeah, Hobbs came in, and um, that's another nice thing. Hobbs can play second base. He can play left field for us. And so Keaton went from left to first. I mean, it, there's just a lot of interchangeable pieces where we're not just stuck using one lineup, and, and uh, if we need to make a change, we have to bring somebody in and out. It's, it's nice to be able to keep him in the lineup, it, hitting, and just move him around a little bit. Through eight guys out there, you knew it was going to be kind of a staff day. Uh, I like Jake Porter, your young kid. Got in for the first time, just gave up one hit, one run. I thought uh, Aiden Callahan maybe threw a little better than what his stats were. A couple of balls off gloves that uh, might have been outs. And uh, so, you know, I think overall, top to bottom, you had to be very, really happy with your, your pitching staff. Yeah, this was Jake's first outing, Jake Porter. Um, and I, I, I liked what he had. I mean, he hit a guy, walked a guy. I mean, I, I think he maybe just hit a guy, but it wasn't sharp. But for his first outing, I thought he was okay, especially in that situation where the game was – you know, they, they had a lead, and, and it was a little bit tense, and he had to go in and make pitches, so I like that. And Aiden, Aiden's got such, I mean, he's, what, six 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 seven, and he's got really good down angle on his fastball, and just, he needs to spot up just a little bit better. But you're right, I mean, I thought he pitched a little bit better, but he's, than, than what it showed. Uh, but he's been in some big situations for us, and, and done a really good job. Uh, at the end of the fall, he came in against Arizona, just kind of wiped him out for six outs, and so he's a guy we like. But he's got to get, you know, he's just got to get a little bit more refined. It's we got so many guys in the pen. Um, again, knock on wood, because you hate to say that, that can come in and help us. Well, and Zim came in, and after a little bit of a struggle Saturday. It's nice to get him back on the mound and get a little more con- get the confidence back. Yeah, he needed to get back on the horse. Um, and and the one guy we didn't use tonight was Reed McLaughlin, and, and we had him down in the pen just in case something went crazy because we know he's he's a guy who's going to come in and just pound the zone and uh, probably probably our best guy right now. Really, overall, uh, has been our best guy. We've got you know fortunately we've got a, a bunch of good guys this year. So um, like our pitching staff, Coach Bradshaw is doing a great job with them, and and they have a lot of confidence. If we can keep swinging at one through nine, just putting together good at-bats like we have been, um, you know, I, I think it's going to be a pretty successful season. Uh, Gonzaga coming in this week. Big, big week of baseball here in Provo for BYU. Uh, Gonzaga, preseason pick. Uh, they supposed to play in Salt Lake, and I guess they'll do that today with the weather. Yeah. And then come down to practice tomorrow and be here Thursday. So they'll, they'll be here almost the entire week. But we know how good they are. We know what kind of staff they bring and how well they're coached, it's going to be a, a great series. Yeah, I mean, I think since I've been in the league, um, we've won it a couple of times tied with them, and, and I think overall they've been probably the best overall team from the first year I was here until now. Just every single year they bring uh, a good teams, and they're not only are they talented, they're tough-minded, they, they're aggressive, they, they're not afraid to go in and play at a tough place, and I think Provo's probably a tough place for teams to come in and play. Um, so it's going to be a challenge. We'll, we'll face a very, very good pitching staff. Uh, they play good defense, um, you know, and, and they're going to hit one through nine. So it's going to be two pretty evenly matched teams, and I think a break here or there could determine every single game. Well, Coach, again, as we talked about on the, uh, on the pregame, uh, congratulations on the great start, 12-3, and three, six straight, uh, keep that momentum going. And, boy, I, just, I, I love all the elements of the team and, and how much flexibility you've got. And you see some of these young freshmen come in, uh, with the kind of arms they've got. And, and like we've talked about in the past, boy, 17th and 9th before, boy, it was a little shaky. But, yeah. boy, you've got some guys out there now that you can really count on. Well, it feels like we can we can stay close with anybody. Um, and that's why you've seen I'm not letting guys go too long. I mean, every guy that comes in the game has a from the pen has a short leash. And oftentimes our starters will have a short leash as well. I mean, if they if they walk a couple guys, it's – Let's get a guy going because we need to keep this close. And we having a deep staff like that kind of takes away the fear of running out of guys at the end. And so as long as we're intelligent how we use them and we don't overuse them and keep them healthy the whole season, I mean, I, I think we're going to be able to, to keep teams down and stay with them uh, most of the time and give, give ourselves a chance to win. Well, Coach, hey, congratulations on the big win. Uh, good one today and uh, looking forward to the weekend and uh, hopefully we get some Get some crowd, the crowd out in yeah. a in a in a series we didn't expect to be in Provo, but, yeah. but we're grateful that it's here. Yeah, we need we need that uh, hometown support, and it'll it'll really help us. Uh, it's going to be a, three great games games, yeah. I believe. No doubt about it. Okay, Coach Mike Littlewood, congratulations again on the great win, and we'll see you on Thursday. All right, thanks, Brent. You betcha. Uh, don't forget for more live West Coast Conference broadcast features and information, go and watch the stadium. Dot com. It has been an exclusive presentation. This has been an exclusive presentation of the WTV. 
on the stadium. Good afternoon. Good night, everybody. For Tuckett Slade, this is Brent Lorton saying so long from Larry Miller Field in Provo.